How's it going everybody? It's Razine here for Astro Photography and welcome to the Night Sky in September. What is the Night Sky series? If you're a newcomer here, the Night Sky is a curated list of deep sky objects, be it galaxy, nebulae, or uh, star clusters, things like that. Meteor showers, the moon phases, what planets are up, anything of interest going on in our night sky in the Northern Hemisphere throughout the month of September. I give you an example of deep sky objects from a variety of common focal lengths, so you'll always have something to pick from. And if you don't, I even have a comparison size of sensors, all compared against a 35 millimeter full frame camera. So no matter what your telescope, what your camera, you're gonna find a suggestion to photograph. Also, just before we get into it then, I'm trying out a new filming area. This is one of the spare rooms I have. I'm aware there's a bit of an echo going on, so please, Bear with me while I try and get some decorations up and some sound deadening to try and make it a bit better. With all that out of the way, we're gonna begin with a wide field target, like a, a full constellation. Anything between the 35 millimeter and the 100 millimeter mark on a full frame camera again. And I'm gonna say point it over to the constellation of Cygnus. Cygnus is disappearing now. It's beginning to go down a bit more it's our last chance to start photographing the entire constellation before it starts going too far into the west. At 35 to 100 millimeters, we're gonna be able to basically capture every DSO in it. So it's gonna be a target rich environment. With that one out of the way, we're gonna now get into deep sky objects properly. Beginning with then 200 to 300 millimeters focal length. Now this is going to be a target in the constellation of Perseus, which is NGC 1499. The California Nebula, one of my personal favorites, Love this nebula, Look, love the look of it, love the shape of it. It's this massive, wonderful nebulous region that will really, really, properly, really benefit from a bit of hydrogen alpha data added to it. So get a HA RGB composite going. It's one of these, it's now the season for this target. It will just get better throughout the month and throughout the next few months coming up. Put some time into this. Moving on to 300 and 400 millimeters. Well, there's nothing else to really choose from, is there? We've got M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Classic, popular, famous target. It's captured a lot, but it's always a fantastic thing to photograph, isn't it? Try in different orientations and things like that. It is up all night and it will be up all night for the next few months as well. So the Andromeda Galaxy is my suggestion for this focal length. At 500 to 600 millimeters, if you don't have those wide field lenses such as 35 to 100, we're now gonna punch into Cygnus right in the middle of it, which is the Seda and the Butterfly. It's an amazing area to take. It's just full of emission nebulosity. So HARGB again, awful narrowband SHO. You're gonna have a wonderful time photographing this region. So at 700 to 800 millimeters, it's not going to be a night sky list from myself if I don't at least talk about Cepheus. So this is me cramming Cepheus back into this list. We're gonna have NGC 7635, which is the bubble nebula. However, at this focal length, if you frame it up correctly, you can get the bubble nebula and the lobster claw nebula in one frame. The bubble's a lot more pronounced than the lobster claw, but with enough tape data and enough editing, you'll be able to drag both out, have two, really nice nebulas in one frame. Increasing up to 1,000 millimeters of focal length now, so those slightly longer telescopes, we're gonna swing over to the constellation of Cassiopeia, one of our circumpolar constellations we have in the Northern Hemisphere. It's getting to a good time to image it. And within Cassiopeia, you are going to find NGC 281, otherwise known as the Pac-Man Nebula. Again, another emission space nebula, really good for those HA data. I love emission based nebula. They are prominent, they are everywhere and they're a lot of fun to capture. So if you have 1,000 millimeters or 1,000 equivalent, go put some time onto the Pac-Man Nebula. It's always a good one to take a picture of. Our penultimate size, 1,500 millimeters, we're going to swing over to the second most famous galaxy in the Northern Hemisphere. You probably already know what I'm about to talk about here, over in the constellation of Triangulum. Here we have Messier 33, funnily enough known as the Triangulum Galaxy. This is a really awesome face on, almost face on looking galaxy. And at 1000 millimeters, it's gonna fill 1,500 millimeters. It's gonna fill the frame really nicely. Now, like Andromeda, M33 actually benefits from a little bit of HA data added to it. Makes some of the nebulous regions within the galaxy really pop out. Prioritize your color data, but add a bit of HA in there as well. You'll be 
surprised to see what happens. Now, 2000 millimeters, which is going to be the longest I'm going to talk about today. We're going to swing back over the Cygnus, give it a fond farewell, because at 2000 millimeters, we have NGC 6888, otherwise known as the Crescent Nebula or the Space Brain. Again, this is one of these, uh, it is an emissions nebula. If you just take color data of it, it'll look fine. HA will look fine, but it also really benefits from a bit of O3. There's a there's a, like an oxygen shell around the Crescent Nebula that really pops when you add some oxygen three. Could be good for those dual band pass filters, which are so popular these days. All right, that's enough about these sky objects. Now time to move on to planets for all you planet hunters out there. Now, I only really include a planet if it goes above 20 degrees altitude for any considerable amount of time, get out of that really thick part of the atmosphere, which is really difficult to shoot from. The first one to talk about is going to be the red planet again, Mars. Mars is up quite a lot here. It is early in the morning, so if you want to get the best, it is, you know, those two, three, four o'clock a.m. kind of t imaging windows. However, Mars is up there. If Mars doesn't take your fancy, then you can swing over to Jupiter, because guess what? Jupiter's up as well. Jupiter as well, also best in the early morning though. So if your telescope isn't quite long enough for Mars, but you can get Jupiter, great. Jupiter's always popular because of the great red spot. And if those don't take your ideas either, we can get more and more superior now as we move out of the solar system. Jupiter, move on to Saturn. Saturn obviously needs no introduction. We all know why Saturn is a very popular target, those rings. So if you don't want Mars, don't want Jupiter, let's hit up Saturn. If that is too easy for you, go a bit further again out to Uranus now. So Uranus will be out there as well. It's a nice tealy color planet. Could be quite difficult, quite challenging to take a photo of. And if that is still too easy for you, you can move on to Neptune as well because Neptune is the last planet in the cascade throughout September that goes above 20 degrees. All right, let's move on to the moon then, shall we? The moon phase is coming up for September. So in case you want to know when new moon is, the best time for DSOs, or when to start shooting planets at full moon, the new moon is going to be on the 3rd of September. Then we're gonna have the first quarter moon over on the 11th of September. The full moon is the 18th of September. That's going to be a super moon. It's also called the full corn moon. So that is the full moon. And then the last quarter is the 24th of September. So September's full moon is a very interesting one. It's quite a greedy moon. It has up to four names that I found depending on when abouts and how close to the equinox it falls. So the first name of it could be the harvest moon, obviously big bright full moon and might be a super moon. Good amount of light for harvest in those fields. If not, we can call it the full corn moon as mentioned. I've also seen it referred to as the barley moon and the London College's Almanac referred to as the Fruit Moon. So, four different names for the full moon there. All right, let's move on to some notable events that are going to be happening throughout September. Starting on the 5th of September, the moon is going to be at apogee, which means it's at its furthest point in its orbit away from the planet Earth. So it'll actually be the smallest in the sky. That is around the new moon period. Now on Sunday the 8th of September, the planet Saturn is actually going to be at what's called opposition, which means if we have Earth here, we have the Sun here, Saturn is here opposite to the Sun. This makes it really good, around midnight time actually, makes it really good to view the planet because it's up, fully illuminated by the Sun, good imaging, good viewing conditions. So that might be a perfect time to try and take a photograph of Saturn if that's what you're hunting. So the 18th of September then, that super moon that we're on about, the full moon period, not only is it gonna be that super moon as mentioned, there's actually also going to be a partial lunar eclipse. So let's not just write it off entirely, okay? The full moon. Partial lunar eclipse is going to be happening from my area in the United Kingdom. It's going to eclipse around 3.45 a.m. It's not gonna be totality because again, it's only partial. However, there is a link in the description that I'll put down there if I remember, if not, call me out on it, where I will give you a link where you can actually check when's a good time to view it, all right? So just double check, see if where it is, if you want to take a photo of the partial lunar eclipse. 21st September, Neptune's at opposition again. So again, Earth, Sun, Neptune's over here now. Great time to photograph it. However, it is around the full moon time, although the 22nd also marks the official start of autumn with the autumn equinox. That is where Earth is in one of its midpoints of its orbit around the sun. 
day and night are the same length as each other, hence the name equinox. If you didn't know that before, you do now. So in September, to finish it off, there's only one meteor shower that I'm gonna tell you about, and that is a, a mini meteor shower called the September Epsilon Persids. Unsurprisingly, it comes out of the constellation near the constellation of Perseus. It's a mini meteor shower that is going to run from about the 5th to the 21st of September, peaking at about the 9th of September. So being a mini meteor shower, it's not gonna set the sky ablaze. It has about a peak rate of about five an hour. With all that being said, the first quarter waxing crescent moon shouldn't interfere with you. They're about a medium brightness and they're gonna be moving fast. So if you do hunt it, good luck. May the odds ever be in your favor. And that is it. That is all I have to tell you about the night sky happening in September. I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope you found something useful to take forward into the September when you have a clear sky, something to take a photograph of. If I've missed anything, let me know in the comments down below. Let's get a conversation going down there. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you think it could have been better, go ahead, hit that thumbs down and consider subscribing for more videos such as this. With all that said, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up and keep the cameras clicking. I'll see you later.